When you think of a tree in light of how the gospel portrays trees, you may often think that trees are under a lot of burden because there's this focus on whether or not they're bearing fruit and the ones that don't bear fruit are to be cast away. Well, we gotta look at this from a farming perspective because the thing we need to understand is a tree that is not bearing fruit is using resources that could be used for that which does bear fruit. And from the farmer's perspective, it's costing money and it is not producing anything that's giving the farmer a return on his investment. So the important thing is for a tree to bear good fruit. But a tree can't bear good fruit if it's not a healthy tree, if it's not what Jesus says, a good tree. And so the parable of the tree that we see in today's gospel, which is also similar to parables in uh, the gospel of Matthew, is a parable that says the tree has to be a good, mean a healthy tree, a, a good healthy tree in order to bear good fruit. If it's not a good healthy tree, notice it's not that it will bear bad fruit, it's not, it, 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 it's not that it'll be an apple tree that will bear poison apples, but it won't bear fruit that'll give a return on the investment. And that's always what Jesus is portraying in his parables. He doesn't necessarily say it that way, but it's how we look at it. What is the return on the investment? And the return on the investment of a tree that doesn't bear fruit is zero. And remember, it's not that it's bearing bad fruit or that the fruit that's bad is like poison. It's not bearing fruit that can give you a return on investment. But in order for fruit to give a return on the investment, the fruit has to be good. And the the fruit can only come from a tree that is solid, that um, that is a good, healthy tree. The message is that you cannot fake this Catholicism. You cannot bear good fruit if you yourself are not firmly rooted in Christ. You can try and you will fool some people at it, but you won't fool God and eventually everyone will see through you. Have I seen this? Absolutely. I've seen people you think were stars in their faith and then all of a sudden that reality of their faking it starts to come out and then you realize They're not stars. They've been faking it all along. And what the Lord said is, never be one of them. Well, how can we know whether or not we are faking it? The answer is simple. How converted are we? How rooted are we? If we look at that gospel teaching, notice what that gospel teaching says. The tree is not bearing fruit. Remember, it's not like it's putting out poisonous apples here. It's not giving a return on the investment. And so the landowner says, let's get rid of it. And so no, the person says, no, we won't do that. What we'll do is we'll dig around the roots, we'll try to figure out what's wrong, and we will fix it. But notice the the repair is coming from the roots up, the total transformation. And that's what the Lord is calling us to, a complete, total transformation in Christ. And that means to give of the Lord everything we have so that he can transform it and bring it bring it to fruition that we can give a return on the investment. Another image used often in the Old Testament is that of fire-tried gold. That is the gold that is just put into the foundry and it is heated up and that way the impurities are removed. But in order for that to happen, that that gold has to be totally uh, put into the foundry. It can't be a little bit of the gold. It has to be all of it. Well, so it is with us. We are giving ourselves over to the Lord, and that's what, that's what the parable is about, allowing the Lord to come in and transform us com- completely, convert us depl- completely, and the only way that can happen is if we give ourselves completely over to him and say, Lord, transform me. 
And that's what Lent is all about. And that's why this gospel is here during Lent. It's that time that all of us are called to be transformed in Christ, are called to be made new. And we can only be made new if we give ourselves over and say, Lord, change us. Lord, make us holy. Lord, make us the disciples you call us to be. Lord, make us the parish you call us to be. Lord, make us the faithful Catholics you call us to be. But we have to say to the Lord, Lord, transform us. Lord, make us the country you call us to be. Whatever the case may be, we have to do that. We can't fake it. We can't turn around and say, well, yeah. And we know people who do that. I knew a guy a long time ago, a great guy who I knew in um, the Navy. And he didn't go to church. And the reason why he didn't go to church, he says, people go to church to sell shoes. And I would look at him and say, that's got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. What in the world are you talking about? I've never met anyone who sells shoes at church. And he goes, no, it doesn't work that way. He goes, what happens is they go to church, and then after Mass, they'll be sitting there, or after church service, whatever um, Christianity you want to talk about, they'll be sitting there in the, uh, the foyer, and they'll say, hi, how are you? My name is Bill Jones. Here is my card. By the way, I sell shoes. And remember, what's going on, what he's saying is, he was never there to experience Christ. He was there to sell shoes. He's faking it. And that's what the Lord is saying to us, especially as Catholics, we have to listen to it. It's not about faking it. You can't do that. Either you are transformed in Christ or you're not. And the only way you can be transformed in Christ is to allow him to transform you. When you walk down that aisle to receive the Eucharist, you are willing to, uh, to offer yourselves to him as he offers himself to you, and you're allowing yourself to be transformed. If you're not ready for that, I want you to think for a minute before you walk down the aisle. Are you ready for, to give yourself over to Christ? That's what that whole experience is at the Eucharist. That's what the Sacrament of Reconciliation is. Are you ready to be converted? Are you ready to turn from your sins? If you're walking into the Sacrament of Reconciliation, not because you're ready to turn from your sins, but you know you want to have a, a, slim, a, a clean slate, um, but you plan to do the same thing all over again, you haven't entered into the process. You're not being changed. You're not allowing yourself to be changed. So these are the things we have to look at. When we look at this whole concept of the tree, the Lord is saying to us, allow yourself to be transformed as the tree is being transformed from a tree that doesn't bear fruit to one that bears fruit. Allow the Lord to come in and do what he must to transform you. And in this particular week, I'm going to invite everyone to ask for that. Lord, please transform us. Make us the holy people you call us to be. And that is either us personally, our families, our parishes, whatever the case may be. And during this time when we are between popes, it's a great time to say, and as church, transform us and send us the Pope that we need. God bless you.